Welcome back. As the country's entertainment scene is slowly rebuilding itself, there's a few markets popping up here and there following the damage caused by the pandemic in the past few years. One such initiative is the Pink Concerts, that's the brainchild of Tabo Selepe. Tabo's passion for business and entertainment has propelled him to support local artists and small township businesses by hosting a revolving pink picnic market. And he joins us now in studio uh, to take this conversation further. Tabo, great chatting to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome. Pleasure all mine and thank you for having me. Great stuff. Now, just tell us about yourself and what you do. Uh, so I was born uh, and groomed um, go in mm -hmm. it is in the northern side of Pretoria mm. um, and um, ever since then I've moved to Sochanguve that is still in the north of Pretoria studied at GP uh, LLB graduate there um, then I moved into the uh, financial sector and uh, this year I decided I actually wanted to do something different and something different and unique and uh, that thought and that decision has bred or has led to the formation of this brilliant concept uh, called the, the pink market so what is the thought process what really inspired it actually I'm, I'm a globe trotter yes. and um, on my 38th birthday I decided to do a three continent tour and funny enough in six cities uh, from Cape Town Paris uh, Los Angeles, New York, there were markets. But yes, what was different yes. about them is that they're stagnant. And I came back uh, in Pretoria. Why do you mean stagnant? They're not revolving. And the reason why is that, is that you go to the market, it's the same thing over and over again. Mm. But what mm. I wanted to create uh, is an opportunity uh, that township um, also has to experience the same. Um, so what we do is that each and every time when we want to go to a market, we have to go and travel all the way to Central Business District for uh -huh, such. But uh -huh. we never get to have the experience within our townships. So I can't have, uh, at this point, have pink markets in every township. So ideally is that let it revolve from Pretoria, from uh, Winterfeld, Mabobane, next time it'll be Soweto, then okay. it'll be whichever township. And that's, that's actually what inspired it. So how is it different from the other markets that uh, people have grown so accustomed to? Um, well, the difference about this one is that, first and foremost, it's going to be held in townships, yes. right? Mm. And um, you will have local artists. Um, ideally, I want to promote young stars mm. uh, in the entertainment industry and entertainment sector um, so that they can be able to work along your big stars. And then you've got your food uh, suppliers. Mm. And I'm talking about... Um, somebody who sells ice cream on the side of the road and you actually bring them in so that they can be able to have an opportunity and expose mm -hmm. their product to the um, to the greater public. Okay. And then uh, just to add a bit of sparkle, I mean, it comes in pink. Why pink? No, actually, I love the color pink because... <sighs> Pink speaks about love. Yeah, it's a very yeah. youthful color. Uh, it's a very childhood color. And I wanted something different from yeah. your um, typical all-white events that have been happening. Is that happening why you're wearing a pink shirt? I'm wearing a pink shirt. It's a represent. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for me, it, it was something different. Yeah. And I wanted something that's unique. Mm -hmm. uh, when you think pink, you'll think about that. Because now you're thinking, um, think of the grand... Um, uh, white events that used to happen yes, yes, previously. Yes, I remember, so yeah. that that on its own was a signature. Mm. So now, when you think pink in townships revolving, you'll be thinking about us. Mm. And how how do you envision this event uh, impacting on on the local businesses? And I quite like the idea of focusing on the township because that is where it's needed the most. I mean, how then do you see uh, it in, in envisioning in boosting up and propping up the local businesses, especially at the township level? Think about it this way: you've got somebody who sells food in the township they want exposure mm. right and when you create such events people come in and they enjoy their food and that's exposure mm. the um, locations for instance this one we're launching it at lux lounge it's a beautiful space and when you get there you'll be like am i in the township mm. and that is what we want to um, to offer our people artists yes. right young and upcoming artists associating with big brains so that they can get that kind of exposure but mm. one thing that actually uh, from 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 the owner of the uh, of the location basically has something called local ticket suppliers. So basically what happens is that what I do with uh, um, a big uh, ticket outlet supplier, we have that in the community. So people are actually oh, okay. selling tickets and they actually have some sort of income out of it. Okay. So it becomes a network of uh, people within communities and they can be able to got make you, a living out of it. Got you, got you. Now, and with digital migration taking over, how can the township uh, business adapt to this model? Um, look, uh, with digital migration, we basically one thing that I would like to have is that we, as these events are taking place, I also want to showcase them um, live on our social medias. Yeah. Yeah. I also want people, however, to come and experience it themselves because this, it, 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 it um, even though things could be very digital, it, 
it would take away the experience of being there and enjoying the performances yourself. Um, we'll actually, as time goes on, be able to um, revisionalize um, our, um, the sector okay. on our side. But uh, for now, I just want people to have that experience because nothing beats the okay. personal experience. So what goes on in the markets then? Well, apart from food and um, everything else being sold, what else goes on? Is there live performances perhaps? There's going to be live performances. So yeah. what will happen is that this one is more young and it's more vibey, oh, right? right? So right. as we progress and hold events in different spaces, mm. we will look at the kind of market that we want to at attract at the time. Mm. So which means that one minute it could be a soul session, one minute it could be a family event. Okay. So okay. it is not going to be... Uh, monotonous in that you will find um, the same kind of artists performing at the same space all, yeah, yeah. all over. So when we get to Soweto, as an example, then we're going to have young mm -hmm. stars in Soweto bringing what they, um, they can do best. And just considering the state of the township economy, how would you encourage young people to start supporting local, to start supporting township business? You know, township business is very big. And um, I think we are not leveraging it as residents within townships. Yeah. And uh, mostly you have a lot of retail uh, stores like food, mm -hmm. uh, liquor businesses, uh, even the taxi industry, if you can put it that way. But what we need to do is that um, another company that I'm actually um, involved in is a call center space. So I want to bring call center space into townships. Oh, right, so right. not so long ago, I attended a meeting in Johannesburg uh, invited by government um, so that they can actually understand what is happening uh, in the call center, especially black owned Okay. Uh, space. So okay. uh, my interest is to take such businesses and put them in the township because there is more opportunities there. And I don't think we're taking that kind of an advantage um, as the community ourselves. But why do you think that's the case though? Is it uh, lack of information or is it just simply apathy? Uh, it could be lack of information. It could also be accessible, accessibility of this information. Um, I think and I strongly believe that if we can have a lot of information centers uh, within our communities, it makes it easy for people to have access mm. to this. I was fortunate that I would get um, an invitation from somebody who yes, uh, yes. basically I know on a personal level to say, actually, because you're busy with this, um, come into this meeting and hear what is happening. But yes, not yes. everybody might have the luxury of that. So mm -hmm. it is important that we have information centers available. Mm -hmm. um, if we can have, um, you know, uh, opportunities where our government can be going uh, from one community to the next and telling indeed, them about the, the information that is available, it would really yeah. help the, the youngsters out there. Okay, so what next for the next Pink concert? Look, I am, um, um, initially I wanted to um, have a... October market. I'm still mm -hmm. busy on the planning um, phase on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, I want it to be really big. Um, next year, I'd like to have a pink maquis um, at Durban oh. July. Okay. Um, ideally, I don't want uh, people to break their bank accounts for that, yes. but it ha they have to be able to have the same feel yes. um, with everybody who would be there. So, but we'll see what happens. All right, Tabo, lovely chatting to you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you, so you very much. Thank you very much for Thank having you. me. All right, that was uh, Tabo Selepe, and he's been speaking to us about how he's adding a bit of sparkle to entertainment through his revolving pink picnic market.